Hey, what's up, guys? Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com. New guest today, my friend Andrew DeLuca from all the way from sunny Las Vegas. How sunny is it out there? Like, it's got to be better than here. It's like, I think, 60. So it's, it's pretty nice. Doable. Like, zero here today in New York, but I'm not complaining because what's going on in the Midwest is ridiculous. So <laughs> yeah, I'll, pa I'll pass on the negative 50 wind chill. Yeah, I, I've been hearing. <laughs> what is up with that? So anyway, uh, for those of you who are in the Facebook discussion group, you know Andrew. He makes some really awesome, awesome like progress and exposure videos that are like so incredibly helpful to so many people. And I thought we would chat for like a half hour or so today. We'll talk about kind of where you've been, where you're going, where you're at. We'll take some questions that were in the group. And of course, as always, if you're not in the group, follow the link in the description wherever you happen to be watching and join the group. It's a good group, group of people, right? So. Oh, yeah. I think the reason why it's useful to to do this, and I really appreciate you taking 30 minutes of your day to do it, is, you know, people can listen to me all day long, and I've been kind of in recovery mode for years and years and years. And then we had Jackie, who's also kind of on the other side. But it's nice to hear from people who are in it, you know, so in the middle of it like you are. And the fact that you're willing to share is, like, awesome. So I, I cannot thank you enough for this, yeah, for being so transparent, so willing to share and all that stuff. So, so give us, like, the Reader's Digest version. Like, where did you start? Give me like the the two minute version of like what's your story? What's your story, dude? Tell me your life. What, tell me your life. <laughs> two minutes though. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, you know, honestly, I had panic attacks as a kid, but I didn't really know what they were. Um, I was uh, uh, anytime like uh, I would get into like some really like bad trouble. Uh, I was a little shit as a kid, so <laughs> yeah. um, I, I would have panic attacks, and again, I didn't know what I what, what they were. I'd just be really fearful. And then uh, fast forward into uh, shortly after I graduated high school, I had a really bad panic attack on the highway here in Las Vegas. We have a bridge system called the Spaghetti Bowl, and I was on the highest bridge, and it is a very narrow bridge. And I just hit like just just like it was like a parking lot. And I'm up on this high bridge, and I just went into a panic attack. I didn't know what was going on. I remember I called my mother and I'm freaking out <clears throat> and uh, slowly but surely that got the ball rolling on avoidance. Um, I start, I, I one immediately avoided that bridge, started avoiding the highway. Um, it kind of led up for a while. Um, I moved to Washington state for a short time and then I came back home. Uh, I was good for about a year and then uh, it just started happening constantly. Um, so I started avoiding going across town. Then it was going, you know, halfway through town. All of a sudden, um, I just could only get to work and back. And then the uh, the market crashed and everything happened. And I uh, uh, actually lost my job and I was unemployed for like eight months. And I wasn't leaving the house and I became completely sedentary or not sedentary, <laughs> completely right. just unable to leave. Um, you know, and then I just kind of became an agoraphobic. You know, occasionally I could leave, I could do small things very, very nearby. Um, I just, I was missing everything. I missed uh, so many events, birthdays, weddings. Um, I, I actually missed Christmas, uh, which is a huge thing in our family. And uh, I ultimately had to move to my parents' side of town. I actually live in the same neighborhood as them now, just so I would stop missing family events. And yeah. then, uh, yeah. And then just before I joined this group, you know, again, I, I said in the video, I was a content agoraphobic, you know, I run my own business out of my house doing those things. Um, I had a panic attack that was just super bad and um, or super bad the way I reacted to it. And it just scared the crap out of me and it threw me into this dark whirlwind, like just sensitized state. And uh, I was lost for months now, just like a lot of people in the group. And then uh, uh, ultimately I found uh, you and your channel and uh, then joined the group and um had a couple very brief conversations through the comments with you and just said all right this is what i got to do and i got started and here i am now and you're you're much further down the road so you wouldn't i mean you wouldn't necessarily call yourself recovered right now you're in the process no no i mean i'm i i would say that i'm pretty recovered from that sensitized state that i was in okay um but the agoraphobia part, I don't consider myself an agoraphobic anymore just because I'm not avoiding the way that I used to. I'm definitely not homebound anymore. I'm, I'm out. I've been out three times today. I'll probably go out another three times this afternoon. Um, I'm still working kind of like within about a two and a half, three mile radius. But, you know, 
every single day is, is, you know, I have exposure work where it's, I'm going out and I'm facing some fear. Other ones, it's not really exposure. It's more just kind of continuing to go out and being as normal as possible. Yeah. Um, but I mean, if you remember when I first joined this group, we're talking, my first real exposure was going to the gas station, which I can throw a baseball and hit it from my house. And that was terrifying. And right. now, now I'll go in there. I've, <laughs> I go in there every single day. I've actually made friends with the clerks and uh, I'll go in there just to hang out and talk. And it's, you know, like Jay and Silent Bob, I kind of just <laughs> sit. Oh, I love it. Silent sit. Bob. <laughs> exactly. I'm just sitting out there. I started out as Silent Bob. I didn't say a word when I went in there. Now I'm a little bit more like Jay. And, you know, <laughs> exactly. I will pay for video of you doing the song in front of <laughs> Exactly. That's Snoochie great. Doochies. That's exactly right. That's awesome. So, I mean, obviously, from a, a tiny little, you know, hundred yards, a couple hundred yards, if you could throw, you know, throw a baseball at the gas station to now a couple of miles, a few miles. I mean, that, yeah. that's a, you know, 500% increase in your yeah. radius for sure. And I, I'm guessing that like at this point, maybe you're in two and a half or three miles, but if you had to go to five miles today, way easier to do those extra two miles than it was to oh, do yeah. those first 200 yards to the gas oh, station. Absolutely. Six months absolutely. ago, whenever that was. That and I've gotten so much better at dealing with anticipatory anxiety that now, I mean, most of the time how I dealt with that is if I felt any anxiety, like I got up, I'm like, oh, I got to go to the store today or I got to do this. I would just be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go right now. I'm just going to do it because I don't want to be thinking about it all day. Um, right. Now I've now I've kind of learned to just, you know what, the, the, the thoughts come up that, oh, this is going to be hard. Or this is going to be terrible. It's just like, you know what? I'll just deal with it when I get to it. But right now I've got other things to do. I'm going to take care of that and then. If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah. And that, that's that focus thing that we talk about a lot. So as you went into the fear, I'm guessing, and correct me if I'm if I'm wrong here, but as you went into the fear and sort of unmasked it and knew that you don't have to really be afraid of those feelings anymore, it becomes a whole lot easier to take those thoughts like, oh, no, I got to go to the mall today and like yeah. just say, well, F it. I'm going to think about that later because you're not yeah. so... You know, like you might know, like, well, I'm going to be uncomfortable doing that, but it's not this terrifying specter yeah. looming in front of you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just, you know, I kind of, I know what to expect, especially considering you're practicing so much. Yeah. You know, I've, I've just, I, I know kind of what I'm going to feel. I kind of know what thoughts are going to be there. I know what's going to happen. And um, now it's kind of automatic. Like when those thoughts come up, I just, I keep going. Uh, the only thing that I sometimes have to be mindful of is just make sure I'm not white knuckling it. Like I'm not clenching yeah. the heart. I'm not, uh, the thing with me is in the beginning, I used to carry pills with me and I used to, I used to always have like, I'd have pills in my pocket and I have my phone in my hand. Now right. it's just like, now it's just like, you know what? I don't, I haven't carried the pills in months. Um, sometimes even for more practice, I'll leave the phone in the car purposely. It's just like, I don't, I don't need it. I've never yeah. called for help. So why, why hold on to the crutch? Just, yeah. I don't, I don't need it. And on top of it, if it kind of intensifies it and makes it more, well mm -hmm. then, you know, it's like adding five more pounds to the bar. Well, you know, let's, let's do some work. Let's get it done. Right. Right. Exactly. And that's that, that misconception that says I have to have the phone so that I can call for help when I need it. But in reality, you never really needed help. Like yeah, exactly. even, even on the, that bridge, even on yeah. the spaghetti ball, right? Like you really didn't need to call for help. I mean, no. it, it obviously makes sense that you did. Everybody would in that circumstance. It's your first time, blah, blah, blah. But in the end, you could probably look back in retrospect and say, well, even if I didn't call for help and just sat there, uh, you would have still been here today. Yeah. If yeah. anything, I, if anything, if I had just probably not picked up the phone, if I had just kind of let it go, let it do what it, uh, let it do its thing, and then kind of just, what the hell was that? That was really weird. You yeah. Know? Um, and the smart move would have been if I had actually like talked to people about it and figured out what it was, maybe I wouldn't have let it escalate so much, but you know. Makes sense. Makes sense. And getting back is. to the horse, like right away, going right back to that place. Yeah. You know, but hindsight is twenty twenty, and so many people in this situation, our situation would say that same thing, like, oh, finally knew. But the problem yeah. is we don't know. So you had to yeah. learn. Yeah, so let's exactly. talk a little bit before, and we're going to take questions because people asked some really good questions that they were, they were hoping you would answer. But let's talk a little bit about what it took like, to go from the point where you sort of understood what you had to do and then actually like, really buying into it and doing it. 
and, and I'm guessing not a long time because of the, the it seems your personality type is sort of suited for this kind of thing. I'm I'm guessing from what I know of you, but you know, did you struggle? Most people, the, the biggest obstacle people seem to run into is like, well, you're much braver than me, or you're much stronger than me. And I don't believe that to be true. So what was the process where you're like, oh, well, I hear what this guy, not necessarily me, but anything, the Claire Weeks books. Yeah. I hear what everybody's saying, but this is, how did you get from like, that sounds effing crazy. I'm supposed to go into the fear to like, yeah. all right, I'm doing this. Like this, that's well, the process that goes through. So one, I think I, I, I imagine a lot of people had my frame of thought was, you know, for 10 years, all I did was I kind of just, I, I always fantasized about the day that I no longer had this issue. I fantasized like I've, I have plans like, oh yeah, a couple months from now I'll be fine. I'll be doing things. It was kind of like I was expecting to just one day wake up and it wasn't there. Like a uh, switch was going to go off in my brain and everything was going to be fine. And in that 10 years, you know, I had attempted to do some things with no plan in place, no structure, no help, no idea what the hell I was doing. It was just I have to go and do this and I would white knuckle it the whole time and be terrified. But then I'd get home and it was like I was on reprieve. Like if I had to go five miles, then for like the next week, two miles, I was like, I could do this. This is not a thing. Uh, but then eventually I would start to panic and kind of revert back. Um, what really shook me was being in that dark, dark sensitized state. I was in there one other time before, and that was when I was coming off of SSRIs that I was on for a very short period of time. And I think kind of like you, I just, I had to go through that withdrawal and it was a nightmare. Um, but I knew it was medicine. So I kind of understood what was happening. Eventually I came out and I was fine for a while. This time, this wasn't anything Medicaid, uh, medication. This was just absolute hell. And I was at the point of just absolute desperation. I didn't want to feel like this anymore. And I watched two of your videos stand out. And they're still my all time favorites is, um, the, uh, one of them, uh, you were on your bike and you talk about, you just had a panic attack and what you did. The second one, which is probably my favorite is the one where you're just having an honest chat. I think you were driving to your office and you just said, fuck this. I don't want to live like this anymore. Right. And that, that, that really just kind of came to me. And I was just, I just, that just really hit home. And I remember the first probably three to four weeks, I would play that video. Like it was like my, my workout music. It was like my psych up video. Like, all right, I'm going to watch this. Sometimes yeah. I play it on my iPad while I was driving. Yeah. Um, and then that's just where it came. And it, it's just, you know, I, and then I started kind of stacking those victories of, you know, it took me a couple of weeks until seven 11 was no longer an issue. And right. then it was like, okay, the grocery store, much bigger place, big parking lot, a little bit further. And that, that took, you know, a couple more weeks till it kind of became something easier. Right. Um, and, and that's what it is. I'm not, I haven't gotten to the point where I can just, you know, okay, today I can drive, you know, I'm going to add another half mile. I'm not making big giant leaps. Um, right. I'm allowing myself to basically first time I do something, it's usually a panic attack or super high anxiety. And mm -hmm. then I let it, um, I let it become something that's tolerable. And then it's not, it's a no big deal. And when it's a no big deal, that's when I say, okay, time for the next step. And sometimes it takes a few days. Sometimes it takes like a week or two. But I'm guessing those steps are shorter now. Like maybe yeah. the supermarket took three three weeks. And I remember you posting your videos of like struggling a bit in the supermarket. But yeah, you know, I'm guessing that now each each successive leap forward or step forward is a shorter time duration. Maybe only a few days. Oh, yeah. maybe a week. You're not going to be stuck there for three weeks before you can do the next half mile or whatever. Yeah, no, no, I'm I'm going quicker. I'm I'm actually really looking forward to a couple of exposures I got planned for over the next couple of days because it's finally going to be something more entertaining than yeah. going and buying chicken nuggets. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes it gets so boring. I've heard people say that too. Like, and I remember just driving around my neighborhood, I'm like this is horrifically mind-numbingly boring. But you just you got to do what you got to do. So it's yeah, nice exactly. when you can have an actual target, like maybe an event to go to or something you really want to do. Or you know, yeah, I, I get, it. I get, totally get it. Well, that's good. It's a super good story. And I, it's just, 
it's just on as an aside it's so strange to hear somebody say like you know you're listening to me as like almost like pump up music like i'm just yeah. i'm never gonna get used to that but, <laughs> but i'm glad i'm glad it helped let's right. um we've been at it for what about 15 minutes or so so let's let's take some questions yes i'm gonna yeah. my screen is over here so i'm not being rude i'm just gonna read um we had about 15 or so questions which i think were great from from the group molly asked like how do you stay positive when setbacks happen like you always seem so positive and you look you're like a glass half full kind of guy which it seems like you are it's awesome wow. um honestly it's something new i'm trying on trying to be super optimistic as much as i can um honestly so that's, I, that's not your natural or hasn't been in the past i'm guessing not always i'm a i'm a very funny person at least that's what i'm told um i i, yeah. I, I like to have fun but i get you know i get down i get depressed but staying motivated like the last couple of days, I've been very anxious throughout the day. I have moments where I'm not so anxious. And what keeps me motivated is, one, I don't want to go back. I don't want to start taking steps backwards because I, I, I did that for you know 10 years. It take one step forward, two steps back. I'm not mm -hmm. that guy anymore. I will not let that happen. That and kind of as you start to get out there and you start to do more and more and more, it motivates you to want to do more. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it becomes something that you're terrified of doing. It's starting to feel kind of exciting. Like, it, it's kind of like you're, you know, I don't want to say a sadist, but you're just like, you get, huh? no. you kind of, you enjoy the burn. Like, when you work out, you're like, ah, oh, this is going to be terrible, but it's also going to be so good. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. well, because there, there's a result at the end. You see a result. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah which is great. So, so that, that's good. And I think that speaks to that thing you were talking about that, like, I refuse to live like this anymore. At some point yeah. there's, you make that decision that says, okay, I'm having a rough couple of days because I'm feeling anxiety, but you also have a really good grip on the fact that like, that's okay. It's, it's not a setback because you're anxious. Oh, the setback like, would you, be if you just retreated back in and stopped, that would be setback. Feeling that, like that, is not a that and then, yeah, what people consider a setback is, you know, you, like I, what, I haven't been anxious for like a couple of weeks and now all of a sudden I'm anxious again. Well, the way I look at it, especially when it comes to my exposures is years and years ago when I didn't work for myself, I was that jerk that would come to work sick because my thought was, well, I could stay at home and feel like crap and watch the prices right or I can get paid to feel like crap. I'd rather get paid to feel like crap. So that's, okay. yeah. so that's with my anxiety. It's like, well, if I'm going to be anxious, I might as well still do something. I might as well still get out there and it doesn't matter. Do I want to feel like crap at home or do I want to feel like crap and still do something? And in a way, get paid to be anxious. Like you could be anxious productively as opposed exactly. to passively just sitting and waiting to not be anxious. So oh, yeah. that's good. That's a great answer. Let's move on to what, let's see, Laura, I watched yesterday, watched you and Billy's S video. Uh, what's your take? What's Andrew's take on formulating an action plan? Do you have a written plan or you just think of a challenge and do it right away? Like, but, uh, let me just see. I was digesting some hard truths. Why she avoids writing a plan. But so, I mean, you do seem to be very methodical about this, you know? So I, I have certain destinations that I want to get to. One, the biggest thing that I'm not doing to myself is I'm not putting myself on a timeline for like some big, big, giant goal. I'm not trying to put myself on a timeline even for smaller goals. It's kind of like, I will get there. Every day that I don't stay home is a victory. Every day that I go out is a victory. I get bigger victories when I push and go a little bit further. So right now, there's things that I want to do north, east, south, and west of me. Um, right. And I kind of just, I, I try to make sure that I'm going different directions. I think you said in like a video with Billy, like how you could go to the same place, you know, 50 times and all of a sudden you take a different way and it's all of a sudden really hard again. Yeah, so, a and I, I, yeah. And I was feeling that. So I, again, I, I know there's certain landmarks that I want to hit. So I kind of do smaller steps to get me there. I don't have like a written plan. I don't have a timetable. Um, I just, I know where I want to go and I kind of just have it down. Okay. These are the steps I need to take to get there. Yeah. And it seems like you have a good grip on, as opposed to saying, well, I need to get to like, you know, a night's game, like, yeah. and I'm just going to do that next week. Well, you're, you're building it bit by bit to get to that as yes, opposed exactly. to giant exposures, you know, every once in a while, you're doing little things every single day. 
Exactly. So yes. I, I think I'll chime in a little bit, you know, on that question. Like some people do better with a written plan. Some people do better with a therapist giving them a plan. This week, you're mm-hmm. going to do this, then this, and this, like homework. But it's kind of an individual thing, I would say. Some people can just keep yeah. it up here, you know. Some people wing yeah. it. Yeah. So I think you're doing it right, though. So Adam asks two questions, three questions, a second, two questions, actually. One, how do you know that you're doing it right? And at what stage does the penny drop? I, I'm not sure what that, I'm not sure the, the penny drop thing, but how yeah. do you know that you're doing it right? Like, how did you know? You've done some, you've tried some stuff before. So yeah. how did you know, like, oh, wait, now now this is right. This is working now. Well, in the beginning, again, the years that I was kind of dealing with this on my own, no, no YouTube, no, you know, that anxiety guy or anything else, it was I would go out until I felt like crap, and then I would revert back. And then I'd go out, and if I felt like crap, I'd come back. And um, I, I found a recording from Dr. Claire Weeks where she something like that. And that's the way he approached his exposures. He would go out as far as he could. And the moment he felt panic, he would retreat and he would just kind of keep pushing. He got to the point where funny enough, he flew all the way to Las Vegas. And then one day he went to the bank, had a panic attack and just like, Oh my God, my life is over. Went back and became agoraphobic again. And it was like, well, he didn't learn anything because he was scared. I knew that I was doing it right because Dr. Claire Weeks, you, basically everyone in this group says it's going to suck and it's supposed to suck. Um, the, video, the video you did with Jackie was so helpful because just hearing her saying I was terrified, I was like, well, check. I got that one down. <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I got, I'm good at this. Yeah and, then, yeah. yeah. and then I just, you know, I could feel, um, again, the first time I went to the, to, to the 7-Eleven, I commented like on a video or something. I can't remember what I commented on, but I was I addressed you and I said I just went to the I, I just made it um, to Seven Eleven and back. I did it, and you you literally replied, "Not good job," or, or you did say "good job," but not like "congratulations." Go, you know, relax. It was cool. Go do it again. And I was like, "Great!" <laughs> so I oh, yeah. jumped right. I yeah. I was like, thanks, buddy. <laughs> I was like, you thanks. should be a personal trainer. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> exactly. So I just I, I just said, all right, this guy probably knows what he's talking about. So I jumped in the car and went back. And I kind of made it a thing. And I asked you, I said, how, many, how, how often should I do this? And you're like, why should you ever stop? I was like, oh, all right. So I, 7-Eleven was seriously three, four, or five times a day. I just kept going. And I knew it was working because it stopped being so terrifying. And then as I moved on, I learned I'm, I'm learning still how to not be afraid of when I am panicky or when I am anxious. I'm anxious right now. I could not care less. I can see it. It's just you do <laughs> not care. I, don't, I can't I see you're anxious. Care. I can see that you just flat out don't give a rat's ass. Exactly. Yeah, huge difference. Oh, yeah. So the, the, Second question that Adam asked, which is a good question, and you feel free to withhold whatever you want to withhold here. How do you do it? Can you do it without the support of family and friends? I mean, I know you have someone in the group with you as your wife, your sister. I'm not sure who you invited in. Yeah. But I've seen them cheer actually, you on a little bit. Yeah. My, so, actually what, my, so my my wife is my wife is in the group. Uh, she doesn't have any issues. She's moral support. She likes to you know see what it is that I'm doing. And then my sister is in the group because she has her own uh, anxiety issues. Um, she doesn't really chime in, but she, I know that she's seeing the content. She's very appreciative of, uh, of it. Um, I mean, can you do without family and friends? I mean, I am very fortunate. I am a very, very close-knit family. I'm the oldest of six. I've got amazing parents. I have four kids, five dogs, a wife. I mean, I have got a, I have a huge team in my corner. Too. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's, it's very loud here, <laughs> but, um, at the end of the day, they could all get in the car with me and like everyone pile in the end of the day. I have to walk it. I, I have to do it. So their love and their support being there for me is amazing. Um, but I don't talk to them anymore about when I'm anxious. You know, my wife occasionally she'll she'll see it. She's like, "You anxious right now?" I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, "Oh, all right." And I just right. tell her, "I'm like, I, I, no it. big deal." Yeah, that's yeah. it. 
I don't, I don't need her to feel bad for me. I don't need her to console me. Um, you know, it's just because it's not going to make me better. I don't need anyone to understand what I'm going through because it doesn't help me. I just need to, just I just it. need to do me. Exactly. I just need to do yeah. me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm with you. So I guess Adam, to answer to that question, like, I mean, it certainly is nice to have the support of family or friends, but yeah. I, I don't believe, and I think Andrew's answer is, is excellent. Like it's not absolutely required because in the end it's on us anyway. Exactly. You know, so, so it's a good answer. So Rihanna says, I find that my anxiety, um, I have very uh, sticking thoughts, I guess, obsessive thoughts. I will be obsessed about one feeling, then it switches to another feeling, then there's always something wrong with me. I feel like I always have to have something wrong with me. And, and Molly was kind of in on that too. Like, have, have you found that where, as you've gone through this process that you kind of focus on one thing or another? I mean, and I think people seem to do it symptomatically. Like this week, it's my dizziness. You know, next yeah. week, it's my stomach. The week after that, it's my heart. The week after that, I feel like I can't breathe. Have you gone through any of that? So I was able to really quickly get through the uh, physical sensations just because most of those physical sensations I feel when I'm working out anyways. Um, so yeah. it, it kind of, it's weird when you're having a panic attack, you know, I'm not doing heavy squats. So why am I feeling dizzy and lightheaded and out of breath? Yeah. But um, it's, it really just sunk in. I mean, really understanding what's happening in a panic attack. It's like, okay, this is just my body doing something that it normally does. I'm just going to trust my body right now. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not going to fight my body. My body's just going to do what it's going to do. Um, yeah. My thing and still kind of my thing is just the thoughts. And when she talks about sticky thoughts, uh, there were times where, yeah, it was one particular thought, especially when it was in that dark place. It was always, is this going to drive me to do something bad? Is this going to drive me to hurt myself? Which was right. really weird because I'm scared to die. But I'm like, is this going to make me kill myself? Like, that's just a really weird thing. And um, I, I was working with a therapist for a, for a time, um, and he had me trying to list out these thoughts and, and do all this stuff. Someone in the group was just talking about this yesterday. And then another person replied, uh, with this, oh, the identical form that I was filling out and mm -hmm. trying to write down your thoughts and, and put the lie to them, distort them, this, that, whatever. And right. that, that didn't work for me just because it was like, all I'm doing all day long is just writing down these thoughts. What I had to learn to do and what helped me was just keep myself busy, not distracting, but just mm -hmm. go about my day and just let them be there. And I've said so many times in videos, just like that toddler screaming in your ear, just let them scream. And it sucks because uh, the biggest thing is, is you can't, you can't want it to go away. If you want it to stop, you're inviting it to stay. If you just let it be there, you get to the point where it's, I was always saying like, I hope I'm better by Christmas. That was my thing. I want to be better by Christmas. I don't want this to ruin Christmas for me. And sometime in like November, I was like, you know what? I don't care because I'm still going to enjoy myself. I'm still going to have fun. I don't, I don't care. It doesn't have to go away. Right. And when I stopped caring so much, it dramatically came down. But it takes, it takes time. It's like yeah. if, if, if you have to lose 50 pounds, you can't work out one day, eat healthy for one day and say, well, how come it didn't work? It's, well, it takes time. You have right. to keep working right. at it. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm much better today than I was. And these are behaviors and thought patterns, because thinking is behavior also, that are ingrained yeah. over years, 10 years. You mentioned 10 years. So they yeah. don't go away in two weeks or three weeks. You know, they just exactly. don't. Exactly. You're yeah. basically, you're extinguishing certain behaviors and replacing them with others, whether those are physical behaviors or cognitive behaviors. And that is a time-consuming thing. Oh, yeah. So let's see here. The next question, which we touched on a little bit, um, uh, Diane, I got to mention Diane. I don't have a question. I just want to let Andrew know that he is crushing it, which you are, dude. <laughs> so good, <laughs> Diane. <laughs> um, so Laurie asks, my question is, and, and we went over this, but we'll touch on it for a second. My question is, when you started exposure, did you always stay in the place you were panicking or did you head back home? And you talked about that. That's how yeah. you knew you were doing it right, when you would not retreat and you would stay yeah. there. And I remember so, seeing a video where you went to the supermarket, you struggled a bit, you went out to the parking lot, you went back in. And I think yeah. you got a text from your wife while you were sitting in the car. Yes. About saying something else. Yeah, like so you get had the to chicken go nuggets. <laughs> right. like, That's it, the chicken nuggets. So yeah, thanks, I think the man. answer to that is you would stay there. You you were yeah. not retreating, but stay in the anxiety and even the panic, correct? 
Yeah. So one thing that I'm very proud of with myself, and this isn't what I'm not trying to like challenge anyone say like, you got to do this too, but Mm -hmm. I have yet to retreat. I don't care how bad the anxiety has been. My second time going into the grocery store. If one, if you go backlog to all the photos on Facebook, you're going to find a picture of me where I just look very pissed and actually I'm just shitting my pants, but I look very angry. And that was my first time in the grocery store. My goal for that day was just to go in, take a picture so I could prove I was there and go home. The next day, the next day I went and bought my wife flowers and I walked into the store. The florist is right up front. I grabbed the flowers and I was in full blown panic and I started walking towards the door. I put the flowers back. I got to the doors and I literally said out loud, F this. I'm not going. Because I started to feel walking away. I was like, screw this. I'm not, I'm not, re- you don't win. I, win. I went, I got the flowers. I came home. I gave them a big kiss and said, you friggin' deserve these. These are 10 years coming, you know? And yeah. that, I remember that. that, and that to me was, I, I was still so anxious giving them to her. I was shaking, giving them to her, but I was, I was proud. And I was also kind of angry at the same time. I was like, why was that so hard? But you know, um, such a common thing, such a common thing. Why did I wait 10 years to do that? Like that that thing hits, you know? Exactly. I, I think what you just said, that moment, that moment, like F this, like you don't win. I win. Like somehow that has to be part of this equation at some point. Like there, there's a there's a motivational video again. I'm all about motivational things. I'm a personal trainer. Sue me. You better be. Right? You better <laughs> exactly. Be. <laughs> there's there's a guy. I always forget his name. He's like a, a reverend. He speaks he speaks to like troubled youth. He goes to inner city schools and stuff like that. He's got great videos on there. And one thing that I love that he says is he says most people when they get tired they quit. And he said that uh, what does he say? He's like uh, you're already in pain. You're already hurt. Get a reward from it. Don't cry to quit. Cry to keep going. And that that's something that I'll say to myself. It's like, all right, you know what? I'm already here. I'm already panicking. I already feel like crap. Let me do what I came here to do. Right. And you know what? I'm, I'm, and that to me kind of just, that's why I don't retreat. I came here I, for a reason. I'm not leaving this store without right. what I came for. And I think if I could frame that in, I mean, that's a story of just like, determination and to a certain degree strength and like a willingness to see it through. But the yeah. nuts and bolts of that, which really think about it this way. So if you have a hard time saying like, well, Andrew does that, there's no way like Drew did that. Andrew does that. I could never do that. But you, the reason why you want to do that is no matter what happens, that panic state is going to come and go no matter what you do. So exactly. you can either panic productively and actually accomplish something, or you could just retreat and panic for no reason. Like yeah. run back home or run to the car and retreat from it and say, this is hard. I hate this. I can't do it. And, and you've actually made no steps forward. But that panic, those feelings could be a, ju- could be a step forward. So yeah. use it as opposed to letting it be worthless. That and the biggest thing too is it's just – I don't know if I heard it from you, if I heard it somewhere else, but uh, Danny talks about it a lot. It's we're retraining our brain. And that's another trick that I use when I'm anxious. I go like I, if I feel like I'm having just a very anxious day, I do more that day. I do more exposures because Mm -hmm. I look at it as my brain gets right now. My brain is thirsty for knowledge. I get to teach it so much. I'm going to do so much more today feeling like crap than I will tomorrow. If I felt good, my brain is learning more. I'm, I'm teaching it new behaviors. I'm teaching it how to react to panic. I'm teaching yes. myself. And it's, it's that, that is an amazing place to get to. In the end, you're taking your brain to class almost every day is what's happening. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Lori, Lori had a quick follow up. I'll answer this one. Also, did you feel like you would lose it or go nuts when panicked? Did you stay? I'll answer that one. Yes, he did. Because we, we all feel the same thing. So if you want to ask, did you feel like you would go insane? Did you feel like you would die? Would you feel like you would pass out? Did you feel like you would vomit? Did you, would you feel, you know, all of those things. Yes, the answer is yes, 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 yes. Everybody feels them. They're all the same. We all feel the same things or at least a similar range of symptoms. And yes, the answer is yes. Felt that, but stayed anyway. So yep. because you Absolutely. never go nuts, never go nuts, never lose it. 
No. Nope. Um, let's see how many more we have because I don't want to keep you too, too, too long. Let's see. Um, no, I'm fine. My, my next appointment actually You're just okay. canceled on me, so I'm good. I'm All right, let's just shoot the shit, man. Uh, yeah, let's let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. All right, so let's talk about Jared asks, Andrew, in your last exposure video, you said your anxiety was quite high. Um, you look and spoke quite normally. Is that due to a lot of practicing, focusing on surroundings versus sensations? Are like, Are you grounding? He feels like when he's anxious, his thoughts and words process at a lower rate like he sort of gets dumber which i think we've all experienced that before oh, yeah. or at least think you do but most yeah. people looking from the outside in jared would probably say well i really couldn't tell honestly jared pull out your camera and start videotaping yourself doing Thank exposures you. yes it's, and then watch it back just yeah, for yourself you're gonna yeah show it show it to someone say what do i look like what 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 do you think i'm thinking right now most people it's not you're not you know, i'm not walking through the store like <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's, 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 that's not what you look but it like. It feels like it. I mean, we have to yeah. acknowledge it. It probably feels like I'm just like in this, oh, like a roller coaster, but yeah. you never really if, looked at And if you watch some of my videos when I'm in the car and I'm driving, sometimes I, it's, you can kind of, if you really look for it, you can see when a thought pops into my head because I'll be mid dialogue and then I'll start not skipping my words, but I'm talking at a little bit of a slower rate. You can see that I'm processing something in my head, but I'm still, you know, I can still chew gum and walk. I can still, you know, I don't forget how to drive the car or how to get home. That's a, it's a big thing. Kind of like, you know, what you just answered. I constantly like, I'm going to get amnesia. Well, I, I it hasn't happened in the 10,000 other panic attacks I've had. So why is this one going to be special? So, and, and on top of it, if I get amnesia, friggin' bonus round, I don't have to worry about doing exposures anymore. <laughs> it won't matter. You'll forget you're agoraphobic, right? It doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah, bonus. I, I'm with you on that 100%. I, I and think I that did, advice, like video yeah. yourself, is, oh, is yeah. really, really, really helpful. I did a video. It's old now. It's a couple of years old. I'll, I'll try and link it if I can. I was in the car, and I talked about checking your body language and, mm -hmm. like, point the camera at yourself, dude, like... Even if yeah. you don't ever show it to anybody, just for yourself and then watch it back that night and you'll see like, oh, I do this, I do this, I do this. And it can help you start to extinguish those little ticks and rituals. Yeah, actually, I saw that video and that's one of the reasons why I started videoing myself. And luckily, my wife was nice enough to get me something like a car bound for the longest time of driving. And, yeah, yeah, I'm driving. I'm like, oh, cop, cop, hold on. Okay, now we're back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> done that. Got the camera down. <laughs> it's, it's a thing. Um, let's see here. So that was Jared thing. Um, <laughs> how do you feel about having come so far? Well, I've got to believe you feel really damn good. I, I feel really good. It's, um, you know, in the beginning, it's, it's nice to be able to go out and do things. It's amazing because my kids are getting old enough where they're going to start retaining memories and I don't want them to have at least an extensive memory of daddy doesn't go places. Yeah. Um, very early on, I made it to my son's last T-ball game of the season. I was terrified, but I was so happy that I went. I actually enjoyed myself at the game, got a hot dog. I felt great. I paid for it later. I was very anxious the rest of the day, but I remember just kept telling myself, I don't care how anxious I feel. No one can take that away from me. I was at my son's game and it yeah. was amazing. And the other thing too, is, is it's kind of, it's kind of funny now it's, um, I, I went to uh, the health food store the other day. That's where I did that video. It was the first time going there. And I came home. I told my wife. And she was like, good job. And she's talking to me like I'm a, like, you know, I'm my two-year-old that's being potty training right now. I'm like. Not, not you know, good, right? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Like, okay. You know what? Say that when I get to the Knights game or say that when I, I get on a plane. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Well, actually, to follow up on that, Heather says, what are some of your ultimate goals? But you kind of said that. You don't really necessarily have a specific, like, oh, I need I mean, to get to Paris or whatever it is. My, my, I do have some long-term goals. And again, I'm not setting a timetable on it. But one, I said very early on when I joined this group, I'm going to go on a worldwide tour and I'm going to come by and give everyone a high five. So, damn it, I had to make friends with Danny. She lives as far away from me as us as she could possibly be. Right? But, yeah, that's ridiculous. We say that all so, the time. And I've got to go see, uh, Billy said he's going to take me to a castle. So I got to go see Billy. I'm going to get you to a, I'm going to take you to a, a Yankees game or something and, and see everyone on, you know, all 50 States. There's this, this group's pretty good. big. So 
Uh, at yeah. some point, I got to get to Vegas. Like I have not been to Vegas. I have to go just to go. So, well, if you go, let give me a heads up so I can at least try and make my way down to the Strip because I imagine that's where you're going to want to be. These crazy people come to Las Vegas and they just for some reason got to go to the Strip. So, <laughs> what else is there? Well, we I'll, we'll we'll lift. How's that? <laughs> there you go. I got you. I got you there. <laughs> got you covered. Right. So that's pretty cool. All right. So let's go to. Um, Let's say when both of you feel like you're having a bad day, anxiety sneaks up. This is Raven. What keeps you both motivated and going, well, we already kind of talked about that. Like, how do you not be down? If there was one thing you could say to somebody who is struggling in the struggling stages and feels helpless and scared, what would you say about what you've gone through and where you are now? One, it's not a life sentence. Nice. Okay. It is it is not a life sentence. You are here as long as you need to be. <sighs> truly, truly, don't just watch the videos um, that Drew puts out or anyone else puts out. Really try to absorb it. And again, when you feel like crap, when those thoughts just won't leave you alone or those sensations won't leave you alone, just continue to live life. You you really have to get to the point. And it's it's the simplest thing to do. It's so not simple to explain it. You have to this is you getting frustrated the other day in the video. It's like stop stop and anytime you feel something, don't don't acknowledge it. Don't don't give it any respect. Don't post in the group that oh this is what I'm feeling and I'm not coming down on anyone that does that. Um but all you're doing is you're kind of just you're you're just continuing the thought process. You're chasing the thought. Um, you're you're naming the sensation. You're kind of feeling bad for yourself. Don't do that. Just say you know what, screw it. I'm gonna feel like crap today. But you know what, I'm still gonna do the dishes and I'm still gonna take the dog for a walk. You know those things. Right. And and it's and understand it's gonna feel like crap and it's supposed to feel like crap. It's gonna be like, it's gonna be that way for weeks or months or however long it's gonna take. And then one day you're going to notice that, hey, I didn't feel like crap for like the last hour. I've actually not been feeling anxious. And then over time it becomes, you know, like me. I oh, I feel anxious right now, but I had a, a great couple of days. And yeah. that, that and the other thing too that I, I had to come to the realization of myself is don't mistake not being like happy or enthusiastic with being anxious. You know, we're not – always you know in the best of moods sometimes you're just a little blah we all have blah days normal people have blah. we're all normal but everyone has a blah day and when you have a you know just uh not motivated i'm not super happy i'm not enthused that's not anxiety that's just being human so don't don't confuse that with uh, I'm, I'm i'm having a setback or i'm or i'm anxious or it's just no you're just human you're just yeah. having an emotions so that's all right and I, I think I'll add to that and say it's not so much that you'll notice – one day you'll notice that you weren't anxious for the last hour. One day you'll notice that you're not thinking about how you feel. Yeah. I'd have been anxious. I'd have not been anxious. Don't know. Like weren't, yeah. didn't care, weren't scanning, weren't looking, weren't evaluating how you feel. And exactly. that's a good day. Yeah, and it, it'll happen for 15 minutes or 20 minutes or an hour, maybe yeah. only. But that will be – that's a huge like oh, awesome. Like you feel yeah. normal for a little while. And don't, and don't try and cling to that feeling because then you just, right. you kind of like chase it away. Just let that just be a learning lesson for you. Say, okay, like come to that realization. Oh shit, this works because <laughs> I, I had that, that relief. I had that, 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 you know, I, I didn't care how I felt and you can be proud of yourself. Even if you feel anxious, you could say, well, I did it once and I know I'm going to do it again. And, that's how you start stacking up those victories. Right. Yeah, that, that's a good answer. That's a really good answer. All right, so let's move on here. Um, we had three questions here, and then that was the end of it. So let's see. Well, these are my questions. Why do I feel better in certain situations and not in others? I mean, I could kind of answer that, but I mean, why do you think that is? Do you, do you have that? I was, I, yeah, I guess. I mean, I was kind of, I was hoping that I was like, you know, give me an example. <laughs> so I really know how to answer it. Uh, but... You know what? I could probably, I could flesh it out a little bit. I think what he Go might ahead. be talking about here is why do I feel better in certain situations and not in others? Usually you feel better in a situation you feel safe for it. Like yeah. it's either in your safe zone, which for some people is just their house or their sofa even, or in that little, like you said, you were a contented agoraphobic. 
Like yeah. you could do what you needed to do to get by and you felt okay in that, in that little bubble. Yeah. And usually you feel worse in certain situations because you're, you're outside the bubble man. like yeah. you're, you're in what is unsafe to your brain territory. Yeah, you well, because you you've trained your brain to be afraid of something. You, you, it's not that you've trained your brain to be afraid. You've trained your brain to avoid what you fear. Right. Um, and that's, I mean, that's obviously why you're going to feel kind of crappy. And you know, it's some again when you feel crappy, be proud, especially because you're probably doing something. Like if you're intentionally making yourself feel like crap, that's a great thing because yeah. you're desensitizing yourself from that to that situation um i mean that's really kind of the best answer i can give right there <laughs> no it's a, it's a great answer and i think that's why you feel worse in certain situations because it you know you're in a place where you haven't engineered it, your brain to say well i'm safe here but you're safe yeah. everywhere you're safe yeah. in the end you're safe everywhere um mm-hmm. i was doing so well and then out of the blue i got a setback i feel the terms i used to accept no longer carry any weight they feel meaningless when I say them to myself. Okay, well, when I say it's only a bad habit, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that. I'll answer Go that. Go for it. So the answer to that question, first of all, we talked about setbacks. Like a setback is not that you feel bad. A setback is what you do with it. So you're not trying to extinguish your anxiety. You're trying to get to the point where you're just not caring that, that you're feeling a given way. And the, the terms I used to accept are no longer valid. And I chime in on this one, I guess. Yeah. I, I talked about this a couple of months ago when I did that positive self-talk is bullshit thing. And I will stand yeah. behind that. Those are things you can do when you're you know, home at night and you're ending your day and you're thinking and you're making a plan for tomorrow. And you want to go through those things and challenge your thoughts logically. Great. But when you feel bad, you will never, ever, ever convince your anxious and terrified mind that you are okay. Never. Yeah, it will win no. every single time. So I'm guessing that when you are out and you're pushing a little bit, and in the beginning, when you were in that 7-Eleven, you were in that grocery store for the first time, there may have been a little bit of like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. But yeah. did you find that like, I'm okay is meaningless? Because your brain will yeah. always come back to you. Yeah, no, you're not. Yeah. What, what, if, what, if, what if will always win when you're anxious and panicked? Always. So that never, never your goal is to be able to talk yourself out of panic. Never. I see. I never like. I never had like a mantra, and I think that might be what he's doing. Is kind of ask that. Do you have a mantra? Do you have phrases you use? No. No. The only thing I ever said to myself very early on, I I remember when I first went into the grocery store, I kept telling myself, "I'm not going to add a second fear. I'm not going to add a second fear." That was the whole thing, and I was kind of convincing myself that I'm just, I'm not going to do that. So it it helped. to not, I wasn't, again, I'm not trying to avoid panic. I'm exposing myself to it. I'm come and get me. If you're going to do it, come and get me and then watch how I react because right. you're not getting anything from me. Um, and again, you can't, it's, it's not positive to talk. One thing that I do is I will do like positive affirmations, but that's not when I'm anxious. That's something to kind of get myself going in the day that, yeah, I am yeah. a good person. I am worthy right. of abundance, that kind of stuff. Think of it kind of like, I mean, pe- anyone who has kids or at least younger siblings, I don't try and tell my kids what they did wrong once I just put them in timeout. They're screaming because they're in timeout. I'm like, right. no, I can't. I cannot reason with you right now. I'm going to let you scream and cry. You're eventually going to tie yourself out. And one of my kids is pretty friggin' determined. <laughs> but it's like, I will talk to you when you are rational. And yeah. finally, they calm down. They're not sobbing anymore. Then I come over. Why did I put you in timeout? What did you do wrong here? And sure. now they can understand and I can teach them the lesson and move on. So when you're, when you're really anxious, do what you got to do. If you're anxious while you were doing the dishes, just keep doing the dishes. If you got anxious while you were driving the car, just get to your destination. You know, do what you have to do. That, that's where the floating comes in. Let right. it be there. And then later, as the anxiety comes down, then if you want to talk to yourself, then, yeah, psych yourself up. Be like, do you see that shit? I just, I yeah. didn't care how anxious yeah. I was. I, I did yeah. it anyways. But the, the mantras and the analysis and the challenging of thoughts and countering thoughts, that only can happen when you're calm and rational. Like, and so if it, it will never work when you're in the midst of the anxiety and the panic. It just doesn't work. It makes it and, worse and, sometimes. 
and and see exactly and that's where very early on in the video i was telling you about when i was seeing that psycho that psychologist i could not hear what he was saying i had to learn and what i did not learn from him but i learned in this group and from your videos and dr claire weeks and god thank you so much for the videos you did with holly by the way um Welcome. Learning how just just to float. That's what I needed. Once I was able to do that, I could then hear what that therapist was trying to tell me, and I could really start doing some of the CBT work. I you, you can't talk to me like you know. It's why you know your family cannot tell you to calm down when you're in the middle of a panic attack. That's right. You know I, that's I, that's it, an excellent point. When people get angry. And literally angry and post about that stuff. Can you believe it? My husband just told me to calm down. That's crazy. Well, why do yeah. you think that he shouldn't tell you to calm down, but you should be able to tell yourself to calm down? Why is it bad when he says it, but okay when you say it? So when you, you are in the thick of it and the shit is hitting the fan, you cannot do I'm okay. You cannot have mantras and chants and and things yeah. that will convince you that you're okay. It makes it worse because it doesn't work. So therefore it's like, I can't calm down. I can't calm down. I can't calm down. The object yeah. of the game and be non-reactive and ultimately you will calm down. And yeah, you just start that whole fear cycle again. It's just, you're I'm telling myself to calm down. I want to calm down, but I'm not calming down. So why I'm scared because I can't calm down. I'll never calm right. down. And, you just, and your body's just like more adrenaline. Okay. Pump some yeah. more. Okay. No problem. You just go it. Yeah, yeah. It's not good. His third question was, um, and this is Fortunato, by the way, what does it feel like to be fully recovered? And how do you know? Um, I, I, I know you necessarily wouldn't call yourself fully recovered, I I will give you my answer to that. When I didn't, when I, I stopped thinking about what I was going to do next, that's when I knew. Like mm-hmm. when I when I didn't have to have a plan, or I did not, I no longer anticipated or cared what was coming up on my agenda. What I have to travel, what I have to, you know, be in the city, what I have to. It didn't matter anymore. Like like regular people do, they just live life as it comes at them for the most part. I'm like, oh, next week I have to be in wherever, you know, I have to be in Florida next week. Okay. Like, I didn't even think about it. That's when you know. That's when you know. So when you're no longer thinking about what's coming up because of how you might feel or will it, will this be hard? Will I be able to do it? I never question anymore, will I be able to do this? Because, yeah. yeah. So I don't know if you, if you have feelings along that. It's like, what is that changing? Are you getting toward that now? I'm, I can feel it coming because... Um, you know, if my my wife says you need to go to the store and get this, it's all right. You know, I guess I'm going to the store. You know, the things that I I do now, it they're that are not really that much of an issue or not an issue at all to me. I can feel that that's what it's like. I'm getting a little taste of what full recovery is going to be like. Um, but for now, I'm just I'm just enjoying the ride. <laughs> so that's good. you have such a good attitude about it, man. Such a good attitude about it. I'm like, oh, thank you. so helpful in sharing all these things. So we're, we're out of questions, dude. We're, we're just Sweet. about 55 minutes. You got anything you want to add? Any closing thoughts? We covered everything? Just pretty much. Um, just, you know, don't feel that you have to do exactly like I did or do exactly like someone else in the group is. You kind of find your own way. It's completely customizable to, to the individual um, the, the, the challenge that I tried to start and, or that I'm starting in the group, again, this isn't a, a competition. It's all I'm, I'm, I want people to challenge themselves. I need to challenge myself to just take that next step. And again, the biggest point I can make is it's supposed to suck. <laughs> it's supposed to scare the crap out of you, but you know, anything worth doing in life, you got to takes takes some work it takes some effort and yeah again it's not a life sentence i'm gonna i'm i will get past this i i am 100 percent committed nothing's stopping me and every everyone has the has the same strength within them to face their fears and to ultimately beat that you're no braver than me i'm sorry i'm no braver than you mm-hmm. it's, right. you you will find your spark you just you gotta want it it's good. It's a good way to end. So <laughs> thanks, man. I so appreciate you taking an hour of your life to do this. It'll be oh, so yeah. helpful to many people. I'm sure they appreciate it too. And I uh, guess we'll wrap it up here. All right. They will, they will do care. another one one day from a hockey game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, brother. Let me hit the stop recording button. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. Catch you later. That's it.